Uh, Mary, uh, where did you grow up? Madison, Wisconsin. Madison, Wisconsin. Right here. Right here in Madison. What street? West Wilson. West Wilson Street. Where the county jail is now. Oh, I was going to ask you if, you're, if the family home was still oh, there, no, but no, long, long gone. gone. Um, what did your dad do? He had a tire company, Monona Tire Company. Okay. Um, okay, speaking of your dad, uh, what was your family like? My family was my father and mother and myself. I was the only child. Only child? Okay. However, we always had people living with us. Oh, like, like whom? My grandfather, my mother's father, always lived with us, and he kind of took care of me because both my parents were working. Okay. Um, was he a Wisconsin person also? Yes. Really? Yes. He was originally, originally born in Janesville. Oh, really? Uh, part of uh, his family, I believe, had been part of the Irish migration to Janesville when it became a great railroad center in the 19th century. Okay. Lots of Irish moved in to work on the railroad. Was your grandfather, oh, did he work for the railroad? Nope. He was a carpenter. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, was your family, uh, was it, so was it more of a nuclear family or did you also have an extended family? I guess you had some of an extended family oh, with your extended, grandfather. Uh, he, he lived with us until he died. Wow. Uh, and uh, occasionally my father's mother would live with us and uh, she had dementia so she would move from one household to another. Nobody could quite take her on <laughs> for too long. So. And in those days nobody went to a nursing home. Because there really, because there weren't any? Uh, no, I suppose there were some. I think nobody could afford them. Okay. And it wasn't considered the right thing to do, I think. You were supposed to take care of your parents. Right. So, so she was there. Then there were one or two friends of my mother who were single women who uh, uh, did not seem to have a family. One of them was divorced, I think, and then they would stay occasionally with so we sort of had a movable feast of so different people. So these friends, were they, did, they, did they end up being aunties of, uh, of some kind? Well, I suppose, oh. kind of, yes. I okay. suppose you could. Um, so, you, so your dad had a, uh, a tire company. Right. It's uh, on Pinckney Street, corner of Pinckney and uh, Doty. Is the building still there? They rebuilt it to look like it is. <laughs> oh, funny. <laughs> On South Pinckney. Okay. Did you once say you had a, uh, there was a Frank Lloyd Wright story vis-a-vis -vis your dad and uh, oh, yes. lack of payment or something? Yes, yes. Uh, my mother got very upset when she discovered that Frank Lloyd Wright had bought a set of new tires but hadn't paid for them, promising to pay later. So. Of course he didn't. That was the story around Madison with the business people. Uh huh. So my mother went up to uh, Taliesin and knocked on the door. And I don't know which of Frank Lloyd Wright's wives were alive at that point. At any rate, uh, my mother told him she would not go away until she received money for this purchase. So she got it. Oh, oh really? Oh, funny. Uh, well, did, now, did, did your mom work? Yes, yeah, she had. Uh, she only had an eighth grade education. She was the oldest in her family, so she went to work right after eighth grade in a knitting mill in Delavan. And uh, the person who owned it apparently saw some of her talents and brought her into the retail store, which is still there in Delavan. It's called Bradley's Store. And so she worked as a buyer. She worked her way up to be a buyer for that store, traveled around. Okay. Oh, but uh, when she got married, she helped with some of the bookkeeping and some of the management. But then um, my folks bought two very old houses, long gone now, uh, up near the where the county building and the jail now uh, exist, and had rooming houses. They were big old uh, yellow brick. Houses. A few still ex of the type exist around Mansion Hill, but uh -huh. the others are all gone now. And so she, re in essence, ran a rooming house. Really? Mm -hmm. So these were once stately homes for 19th mm -hmm. century families that had sold them. And mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. um, huh, okay. 
Oh, what, what schools did you go to? I went to, uh, well, my first school was Doty School, which is now Doty Condos. Oh. Down oh, on right, right. Wilson Street. On West Wilson Street. Mm -hmm. They turned it, they didn't tear it down when it closed and turned it into condos. So I went there. I went to Edgewood High School. Okay. In Madison, and then to Rosary College, now Dominican University, and then uh, for graduate school to the University of Wisconsin. Okay. Um, what were your intellectual interests when you were a youngster? And this could be, you know, when you were a, a kid or in college, or like what, what writers or books uh, interested you? Well, let's see. First of all, I was very interested in, uh, you might say, the artistic thing, uh, drawing, drawing and painting. And when I was in grade school, I took lessons from an old, he seemed old to me at the time, man called Mr. Colt, who had a little art studio up on the square. Um, and I would go there in the summer and take lessons. I loved that. That was my favorite thing. Huh. And then, uh, it, about seventh and eighth grade, some of my friends got interested in opera. And we listened to it on Saturday afternoons from the Met. Oh, on the radio? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, uh, books, I got very interested in archaeology because a friend of my father's worked as a salesman for Scribner's Publishers. Uh huh. So he would give me books at Christmas time. And one of them was on uh, Schliemann and the archaeology of oh, Troy. Oh, okay. So I thought, mm, when I was in seventh eighth grade, I would be an archaeologist. That would be the most wonderful thing in the world. And then he, he also gave me a lot of books like uh, about Greek myths, Roman myths. So I got very interested in mythology, too. Okay. So those were, then of course I loved the books like The Wizard of Oz and uh, Mary Poppins. Okay. Those were my favorite. But you, you are, of course, an English professor. What, what, uh, what piqued your interest in English literature? I suppose in, more in high school when uh, they had some wonderful English teachers at Edgewood High School. The sisters I had were excellent. And so I got very interested in Shakespeare and poetry and novels and so on. Okay. Well, so I think that's when I turned me away from archaeology. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. Um, why did you enter the Dominican Order? I think because I was very impressed with the example with the sisters that I knew, both in high school and then in college. Uh, I suppose, too, this was a kind of a feminist thing, <laughs> becoming a sister and a professional. Okay. Um, I sort of put the two together, I think, uh, the uh, community aspect of the sister's life, plus uh, the teaching. Okay. I had decided by then I'd love to teach English, so I put all of that together. Okay. Um, how old were you when you entered the Dominican Twenty five. Twenty five. Did you did you you had your college degree by then, right? Oh yeah, I had my master's degree. I'd spent a year in Paris at the Sorbonne. I came back, I started my doctorate. Okay. And then I had another year. I went to teach uh, as an English teacher at Rosary before I entered. Okay. So. Oh, what was the what was the Sorbonne like? <laughs> it was remarkable. I discovered you really didn't have to go to class. One of the classes I took only met about once a month. <laughs> well, sorry. <laughs> and you could buy the lectures in the bookstores there. So I really didn't spend a lot of time in the Sorbonne as such. Okay. I did it first, thinking it might be like American graduate school. Okay, but no. No. It, and since I really wasn't going for a degree in which I would have to take exams at some point. Okay. It didn't seem, it seems I could go take the, buy the lectures and read them at home. Okay, did you uh, uh, brush up, uh, brush into any uh, interesting French intellectuals that uh, people would know about? Well, the most interesting probably was, uh, uh, I went to a new play that had just opened in a small theater in Paris, and people were really buzzing about it. Oh, you've got to go see it. And I thought, well, 
my French isn't that great, but so I went and it was weird. It was a two act. I thought it was over at the end of the first act, and people were going out in the lobby, of course, to get a drink and so on. But oh no, there's a second act. Turned out to be it was waiting for Godot. Oh really? <laughs> so. <laughs> oh, what what arrondissement did you live in when you lived in Paris? The fifth. Okay. Did you live in? Right, not far from uh, the university buildings. Okay. And. Uh, did you live in a pension? No, I. I had a strange little um, one and a half room apartment, so called. Uh, it was rent controlled. The old buildings at that time, these were 18th century buildings that had been cut up. Um, so it also, there was um, a so called toilet on every other floor. Okay. It was quite primitive. There was no heating except you had a little fireplace, so I had to buy wood and get through it that way. Oh, wow. Um, okay, we've, we've, we've touched on Paris. Uh, what were you doing before you came to Edgewood to teach? Were you teaching somewhere else before, or was, was Edgewood your first oh, teaching I, assignment? No, I, I taught, um, I taught uh, after I became a sister, I taught at Rosary College. Okay. And then I became the a academic vice president there I was in the uh, 60s. And uh, then in 1970, I came to Edgewood okay. to teach. And then I was only here a couple of years then, two years, because then I was elected to the general council of the sisters. And so then I went to the Mao. Okay. And then uh, after that, I went back to Rosary College to teach and came back to Edgewood in 89. Um, okay, in 1970, what was Edgewood like? It was uh, small. Okay. How many um, students? I don't know, five, 500? Really? Maybe 600. Really, it was certainly small. I, I don't remember how many, but it was pretty well contained uh, in. Uh, Regina Hall, which did not have the extension on it. Uh, it was simply the the building that would, well, you know, it's sort of an L-shaped building. Right. There. Well, the bottom part of the L wasn't there then. So it was very small. The faculty lounge was um, a little uh, tiny place that was about half the size of this room, and there was a coffee pot in there. So people yeah, that was sort of nice. You got to know people. Every people would crowd in in the morning, get a cup of coffee. Oh, funny. Um, now, in, in 1970, uh, were there many uh, protests against the Vietnam War at Edgewood? There, there were. There were people who. Uh, there was some marching going on, um, marching up on Monroe Street. Some manifestations, right? Also, at that time, um, the. Um, First uh, men had come. What year? It had been a, what year? I forget. You'd have to look in my history book. Okay. <laughs> and they were actually a seminarians. Bishop O'Donnell of Madison had decided they should get a bit of a liberal arts education before they went on to the priesthood. So they came to Edgewood. Okay. And they were a lot of fun to have around. Ah. Um, okay. Uh, do you have any? Uh any good so-called Edgewood stories? Like, you know, any, any Stevie reminiscences or anything that's funny or poignant or anything come to mind? Uh, no, one of the more enjoyable things was they used to have a um, kind of a Halloween type party in which all the students and all the faculty and all the staff would participate all together and do crazy acts. Um, dressing up, uh, dancing, singing. It was sort of like a real amateur hour type thing. But it was fun because it was a real mix of everybody. But you see, the college was so small back then. Right. Everybody knew everybody. That was the next part. I've often referred to that situation as called, people call that the old Edgewood. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. Oh. Okay, what, what are you doing currently? What am I doing currently? Well, a number of things. I work with the uh, 
promotion of the cause of Father Matsu Kelly. And I go around and give talks on him occasionally. Uh, currently, I'm also uh, working with Sister Priscilla Wood, who taught for a number of years on and off at Andrew. And we do a film story uh, study together with the sisters at Cincinnati. Okay. So most recently we did Flannery O'Connor, but before that we've done Shakespeare and James Joyce, and we're going to do um, Willa Cather in March. So every few months we do something. Okay, so you find a piece of literature and then a, a, a filmed version of it? Right. We, that we'd like to, we only are doing right now um, stories and uh, stories that have been filmed and have good films. Okay. <laughs> so. That, and then also I've given a couple of talks at our nursing home on topics such as mining, murder, and mayhem near Cincinnati. I'm going to do another one, snakes, slavery, and slaughter at Cincinnati. What alliteration. So I'm having fun with uh, using some of those old county histories from the period. Are you doing any writing projects for this? Like the... Yeah, I write talks for that. Okay. Anything, do you want to publish any of this? No. It's just fun. Okay. Well, funny. Um, okay, well, what is your vision uh, for Edgewood uh, of the future? How do you... I have no idea. Ha! Ah, really? Uh, if you make uh, projections into the future, generally speaking, the only thing you know is they will be incorrect. Okay. So, I have no idea. Okay. Um, of the five core values, which which one speaks to you the most? Well, uh, you know, those core values are not exactly the Dominican values. So if you take the Dominican ones, which are study and community. Uh, prayer. Uh, uh, prayer and? Oh, good heavens, I can't remember. <laughs> I have to look myself. Preaching. Preaching, okay. Uh, Obviously, study and community would be the two key ones for uh, an educational institution. Okay. Lastly, what wisdom w would you like to impart? <laughs> if you live a long and happy life, you have no regrets. <laughs> and I, I see that it certainly is the case with you. <laughs> that certainly is true. I've never regretted any decision in my life, nor... Um, even trying to measure the different experiences I've had, uh, whether it's Rosary or Edgewood or Cincinnati or Europe, they've all been wonderful in their ways. So oh. They all kind of fit together. Oh, wonderful. Well, well, well thank you very much.